Hey everyone, I am John Branch the Fourth, back for another Fuji film video. Today, an exciting day. I have my Fuji green shirt, Fuji green car. I don't have the blimp or the hat, but that's okay. Uh, check out this rig <laughs> so that I can give you the internal screen record and also a little bit of the what's actually going on around the scene. I've basically taken the beautiful ergonomics of the Fuji X H2S or the Hattus as we're calling it, and I have, uh, I guess, put them through a wood chipper and then taken those wood chips and put them into cement mix. And I've made a statue of Dave Grohl. And that statue of Dave Grohl has sat outside in a field for 100 years. It was then hit by fronosphoto.com driving a fire truck and smashed into a bunch of pieces. And then Tony Northrup uh, driving a forklift actually uh, lifted it and dropped it into the ocean where James Cameron hit it with a submarine and made the pieces explode even more. Now they're wet and underwater. And then somebody made a, a snowball. And that's the that's that's what I've made the ergonomics of the Fuji Hattus today. So uh, ap apologies to all for this disrespect, but hopefully it will give you a better look behind the scenes at a wedding day, how the autofocus works and all of the upgrades. My guy right here, his favorite number is 720, which means unfortunately he is only going to record for you in 720. So if things look a little out of focus and the green box is around something, know that it's not, even if the yellow box, the yellow box is the, kind of the tracking and it shows you where the faces are. Green is when I've actually half pressed and it's, it's actively tracking. But if it looks a little out of focus, the, the reason is this boy right here. And beyond this hilarious rig, probably shouldn't do that, the focus breathing on this Canon 16 is terrible. I do have an important question for you. If you are part of the members website, you should join the members only Facebook group because you're invited to that if you want. The members website comes with all of my content, all of my Book More Weddings 2022, as well as all my presets and there's so much more over there. So go check that out, but also join the Facebook members group. This week, we're gonna be talking about favorite snacks for a wedding day. There's also useful content up there. The only thing it doesn't come with this photo of Gary V and myself. Although he does say what's up or uh, maybe deploy gratitude or go jets or something. Uh, let's go to the, let's go to the wedding. Hey buddy. You're the same pants. Different pants. Here we go. Here we go. Tim surveys the scene. There's tables. We're so far away from Tim. Tim's in the corner over here. Look at this. How does it know? How does it know that that's Tim? Now the, now the question is, up against the... Up against the... Do you have a... Fi or a 24. You have a 24. We'll see. So maybe get like three steps closer. Okay. And where does the Nikon Z9 okay, pick wait. up? We need Tim. It's probably not going to get it from here. Oh, I got it. Since we are still on pre-production Fuji firmware, it does not make sense to do an in-depth comparison yet. But first, we thought we'd compare to the Canon R6. Okay. So, what's it select on? His body. Oh no, it's the chandelier now. Chandelier? Okay, right, start walking coming, towards us. Coming towards us, Liam. And there's his face. Wow, okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna call winner. Check out this kit, by the way. Let's put a battery in this guy and uh, I'm gonna show you how I do my autofocus settings. I forgot the micro cord for this, which means I actually do have to run the full size screen today. So my my James Cameron submarine kit just got bigger. Yep. The reason I love Fujifilm cameras is because of how small and compact they are. I'm going to hit record here and I'm going to walk you quickly through how I have the autofocus set up. So you will notice that whenever you hit the joystick up or down the joystick on the, on the back here uh, that you get into this little kind of box situation here you can get smaller so if you want to do single point you can make your single point a little bit bigger you can do tracking which means basically if I lock on to the lens there uh, as you can see very sticky or maybe I'll lock on my face over here there you go so if you want to specifically just lock on to something um, there you go you can do that or how I typically use it um, I actually do kind of a bigger zone so I do a zone like this so as you can see here, a little box uh, that you can move around, you can put it anywhere. I, it's basically you're giving the camera a hint. Uh, at a wedding day, there's gonna be a lot of people, a lot of faces around, so if I can be like, a couple is kind of within this box, and then let the autofocus take over the, from there, I feel like it's just the correct way to operate the camera. Next comparison, Nikon Z9 versus the Fuji X-H2S for autofocus. Uh, again, not an in-depth comparison, but I will say I've used the Z9 quite a lot, and 
the XH2S gets very, very close, if not on exact par with the Nikon Z9, which might be a bit of a crazy thing to say considering the Fuji camera is half the cost of the Z9. I know it's not a one-to-one -one comparison, but for this specific comparison in a wedding day environment or a portrait setting, uh, they do seem to be pretty similarly matched. And because of this, uh, I will be doing a video of this with the Canon R3 as well, which is more in the price point of the Z9 rather than the R6, which is kind of more in the price point of the Fuji camera. So I don't know if there is a correct comparison, but whatever, this is what we're doing today. The Fujifilm Hattuse, obviously huge bump in autofocus. I think that is, at least in my opinion, the biggest upgrade to this. It also comes with video features and the specs are getting a little bit out of control. I guess companies overall, they have to find reasons and ways for you to spend more money, for you to buy the latest and greatest when, in all honesty, if you're just doing photography only, up until this camera and the autofocus upgrades, I would have said that an X-T3 was still fine. Now with the, the upgrades, I'm going to say that it is for sure worth it. If you are shooting anything like this, uh, wedding day, environment, portraits, anything that you need good autofocus and that you would maybe appreciate letting the camera do a little bit more of the work rather than, than you. As a working professional, this is definitely a huge step up for me. So say you are a wedding photographer, you haven't yet purchased into a camera system and you're wondering why is Fuji different or why is it maybe better and maybe it serves your interests a little bit more. Number one, I would say, is the physical size of the Fuji kits. It is a lot less gear to bring with you on a wedding day. Number two is the cost. The cost to buy into the system is a lot more attractive than other brands right now. And number three, this one is maybe subjective. Uh, the color science, the, the classic Chrome preset that you've been seeing all these previews through. I just love the colors that come off of this camera straight out of camera and I don't have to do a whole lot to them in post-production and a lot of the times if I'm shooting in controlled lighting conditions I am happy to deliver the JPEGs. I don't know if they're calling this the flagship yet but it really does feel like a flagship product to me. Uh, the backside illuminated sensor, it's a CMOS sensor, it's stacked, it gives you basically everything you'd need as a wedding photographer to go into lower light environments and get good high ISO performance. I don't yet have access or full access to the raw files, so I'm not gonna do any high ISO tests, but judging from past Fuji cameras, I have been more than happy in a wedding environment. I also shoot typically prime lenses, so maybe the 23-1.4 like we're shooting today, or maybe a 35-1.4 or the 50-1.0, which is an incredible lens and almost worth purchasing into the Fuji system just for that lens alone. And yes, to summarize all of these uh, random thoughts that I've been having, if you do decide to go with this camera, you will not be disappointed. If you decide to upgrade to this camera, you again are not going to be disappointed. There is enough here to love coming from any of the other Fuji cameras in terms of autofocus if you are a professional user or somebody that just wants better autofocus performance in a variety of settings. You'll also notice that there is a bit of blackout uh, when I take the photo, the screen goes black. And that is, uh, I guess, one thing that doesn't exist with some cameras anymore, like the Nikon Z9, that you just never see that. With this, while it's a bit distracting in the video, I don't find it to be that distracting in real life. That In real life, it feels a little bit more natural. Well, on the video, it does feel a little bit like you're listening to Sandstorm at a rave, the strobe light. -na 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 -na. With the Fuji X-H2S, I think it is important to make sure that you set the autofocus settings up for whatever situation you're currently in. Uh, with a camera like the Canon R3, I find that I can just take it out of the box and it's just ready to go in pretty much every environment. With the X-H2S, uh, definitely if you are going to be doing something that's a little bit more sporadic or people are running towards you, you're going to want to set the camera up just to make sure you give it, a, again, kind of like using the zone focusing, give it a little bit of a head start so it knows what to expect and what you expect from it. I haven't even showed any of the photos yet. That wasn't correct grammar. Here are some photos from the day. And as you can expect, the colors are really incredible. These are all straight out of camera JPEGs with the classic Chrome preset, which I shot everything. I shoot all my video in it as well when I use this camera. Thank you so much for joining me here today with the Fujifilm Hattuse and uh, all of the, t the attachments weigh more than the camera. You take a beautiful ergonomic experience. And you just run that through the wood chipper to the cement, Dave Grohl to the Fronos photo, fire truck, Tony in the forklift, and then James Cameron, underwater submarine. Uh, that's what this felt like today, and I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below, and I am happy to get back to you. And uh, that's all from, from here. Go join the members Facebook group if you're a member, and uh, that's that's my my life today here. Thanks to Tim, let me hang out. Go, go follow Tim on Instagram. Liam was here too, and follow both of them, and we can all be friends together.